Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back to another art journal video. Today I'm going to play with new stamps, new dyes and the new speckled egg color. So let's get started. I will be working on my Dilusions art journal and I choose different um, sizes of art journal depending on the focal points. Now I have an empty space here so this is where I'm going to work. Although I do have a splotch up there, I really don't care about that. I'm going to bring in my embossing paste and my stencil and I went with the stencil that looks like uh, a brick. I'm going to go over it in different areas so with my spatula and I'm never creating perfect rectangles. I like to have things looking organic so they look more natural. This brick wool stencil is by Tim Holtz and it is really old. I love the stencil and I keep using it again and again on my journals. I am applying it with a silicone spatula today. And uh, although you can't really tell what's going on since it is white on white, once I apply the color on top, everything is going to pop. Now I need to let this page dry and then I can go back and start playing with my new colors. So here is a look on what I have up to now. And once that page was dry, I placed the book inside a box so that I can do some spraying. Now since I'm working in between two other projects, I need to make sure that I don't make a mess on them. That's why I'm using some paper towel. And here is speckled egg. I'm going to combine it today with vintage photo. And first of all, I'm going to use vintage photo to spray over the bricks. I'm going quite concentrated there so that uh, the embossing paste can absorb first the brown color and then I'm going to cover up completely the rest of the page with speckle tag. And you can see how wonderful these two colors blend. I'm going to move the ink just a little bit so that they blend nicely together. And since uh, I added too much of that brown, I need to go ahead and add even more of that speckled egg, since this is the color that I want to be dominant in my page. I'm going to bring in my heat can and make sure that this first layer is completely dry. Uh, don't be afraid when you see so much color. Remember, Distress Oxide ink is going to dry really pale and it's not going to look as vibrant as it is at the moment. So check out how it looks when it is completely dry. I am going to go ahead and add one more layer of my speckle tech color. Just to make it look even more vibrant. I'm going to use my heat can one more time to dry this layer. And remember the heat can that I'm working with is by WOW. So it has two settings. One is for heat setting embossing powder and the other one is for drying. So that's what I'm using today, the drying setting. Now I absolutely love the combination of speckled tech with uh, vintage photo. Probably my two favorites from the whole collection. After all, when we get a new color, it's always nice to see how it works with other colors, what combinations you can have, and this works definitely for vintage uh, projects. Now this is the Professor stamp set and I will make a project with him as a focal point, but for now I will use this stamp with all that text. I think it's great for background and it will work in pretty much anything. For that I'm going with a black ink, which is something that I don't normally do, but I'm going to show you a trick. When you have the same uh, Distress Oxide spray and the same Distress Oxide ink pad, it is really fun to do this technique, so I'm just going to go with black at the background, adding detail here and there, just some visual texture so that it doesn't look so plain. And if you don't like how vibrant this looks, you can use your Distress Oxide ink pad as an eraser. If you apply too much, it's going to completely cover up what you've done previously. And check out here, you can't even tell where I did the stamping with black. But of course, you can go light-handed and apply just a very thin layer over those letters, which is going to push them back at the background. They are going to look faded, which is perfect for a background look. And that's the beauty of having the same color in different mediums, so you can uh, play with it uh, depending on your needs. 
Now I was really happy with the background. I absolutely love how this looks. So all I'm going to do is to do the edging. I always like to go all around the edges and turn them to be slightly darker. So in this case, I'm going with Distress Oxide Ink and that's Vintage Photo, which is the um, spray that I used for the bricks. This is going to create kind of a border. It's going to frame my uh, pages a little bit. And then I will do the same thing with a black suit, but this time I'm just going to add that on the very edge. Now, usually on my backgrounds, I go ahead and add uh, lots of splashes, usually with white. But uh, today I was so happy with the result that I didn't want to add any other color on top of it. That's why I'm going to add splashes only with uh, water. The water is going to activate the oxide ink, so I'm going to let it for a few seconds and then I'm going to blot it with my uh, paper towel. This is going to give a tone on tone texture and you can repeat it as many times as you like. Every time you apply water on top of Distress Oxide ink, it's going to reactivate. Now it's time to work on the focal points. For that I'm going to do some stamping. When I'm working on my art journal pages, I like to work with uh, this mixed media paper. And it's the same quality as the paper on the Dilutions Art Journal, which is absolutely perfect for my journaling. Now I'm going to stamp three of the cards, so I'm trying to pick up which ones I want to use. They all have lots of attitude. I'm going to place them on my stamping platform, just make sure that they fit there. It doesn't matter if they are upside down, I will use my scissors to cut them out later on. And uh, I'm going to stamp them with black archival ink. This is jet black, one of my favorite inks when it comes to art journaling, just because it is permanent. So I'm going to stamp that a couple of times just to get a good impression. I got a good impression the first time, but I always like to have really vibrant black lines. That's why I'm going to repeat the process one more time. And once I have everything stamped, I will not remove the cuts from the platform. I will explain later on why I need them to stay for a while there. For coloring my cuts, I decided to go again with Distress Oxide ink and I'm starting with um, Fossilized Amber, which is the lighter color here and then I'm going to spice it up a little bit with Spiced Marmalade, which is the orange one. Now, for adding the color, I'm going with my sponge dabbers today just because I don't want to cover up completely the whole cut, I want to leave some areas blank just for some variation. Also notice that as I'm coloring everything, I'm not being very neat. I go outside of the lines, but this is not a problem since I will use my scissors to cut out all the cuts. The only way area where I am being quite um, careful is not to cover up the eyes. However, later on I will go with my white gel pen and light them up a little bit just to make sure that I don't have any uh, smudges there. I went with oranges, obviously because I have ginger, but uh, you can color your cut any color you like. It's your cut and it's going to live in your original pages, so you can go wild. Now, just because when you apply Distress Oxide ink on top of uh, black ink, it uh, kind of fades out a little bit. I want to have the, those uh, lines really vibrant. I'm placing that back in my stamping platform and I'm going to stamp on top and look what I was about to do. Glad I realized it the last second and I saved the day, otherwise I would have to stamp and color them again. So anyway, now I'm going to use my scissors to cut all around them. As I cut them out, I am taking my time, I'm being quite careful and uh, I don't leave any white border. I'm also going to go all around the edges with a black marker this is going to disguise any mistakes that I did and it's going to look as if I did a perfect job while I was doing the cutting. Now I had this idea to frame my cuts in the wall somehow, so I am going to use this new tie, this is designed by Tim Holtz and I'm going to cut out three frames which I will use. So I'm just going to run this through my die cutting machine and um, you can, uh, uh, this is a big die which means that you can cut out even chipboard if you are going for a canvas design then you can go thicker. I'm going for a page inside my art journal so I don't want that to be 
too thick, that's why I'm using paper here. I ended up having an extra one, which I'm going to use in a later project. And I'm also going to uh, keep the inside pieces. You will see that I will use them as a template later on. I also die cut the frames one more time, but um, using a pattern paper that looks like wood grain. And now I'm going to stick one on top of the other. This is going to give some stability and a little bit of depth on my frames. And for sticking those two pieces together, I am using my matte medium just because I can slide them easily one on top of the other to make sure that I have a good contact. Of course, you can use any type of glue that you have. Now for the inside of my frames, I went ahead and used some of the ephemera that I have. These are um, packages that I have for years and it is always a good idea to use up whatever you have and trying to pick up which is going to go behind which frame. So this is where I'm using the inside of those frames as a template. I'm just going to place it in the area that I want to use and then with my scissors I'm going to cut around it, leaving a little bit of a border so this way I will be able to stick the frame on top and I have somewhere for the glue to catch on the frame. Now I will repeat the same process with other ephemera for the rest of the two frames that I have. Again using the templates and cutting out bits and pieces. Before I assemble my uh, frames I am going to use my Distress Oxide ink and that's Vintage Photo. I will go all around the frames to get rid of that white edge and I'm also going to do that on the inside of the frames. I don't want to see any white edges at all. Because of the current situation all over the world, packages have been stuck in various places and the mail has been super slow. But yesterday, for some reason, all the packages arrived at once and I, it was like Christmas here. I was opening packages, I got these new stamps and ties that I'm using today and I even got the new uh, color by Tim Holtz. So that's why I'm playing with that. And I wanted to share a project as quickly as I could. By the way, I hope you are all doing great with the situation. The situation in Greece is really good. We are out of lockdown. Everything is going back to normal. Kids are going back to school. And uh, hopefully we are getting our life back. But of course, being really cautious and very careful when we go out. So now I did some inking with my vintage photo just like always and I'm going to play with the cuts and try to decide where everything is going to go and once I'm happy with their placement I will stick everything down. For that I will use my Nouveau Deluxe glue and I want to have the cuts inside the frame but somehow interacting with it like uh, having parts of it coming out. So you see in this case I have the tail coming out of the frame and part of the cut is behind. I'm going to stick that on top of that ephemera paper that I have. And one frame is complete. I will continue doing the same thing for the other cuts. So this guy is going to go on the rectangle frame. And again, the tail is going to go outside of the frame. And I'm going to stick that on top of the ephemera. Now I think that having the cuts coming out give more interest and make the page more fun. Now for the last guy, and I have to admit he is my favorite, I want him to rip off part of that uh, frame, that painting. So I'm going to measure just about where I want uh, this to be. And then with my craft knife, I'm going to cut some lines. They don't have to be straight. Notice how I make sure that they aren't straight. And I cut three lines coming out from each hand. Then I have this very thin file that I'm going to insert in those slits that I cut out just to distress them a little bit. If you don't have a file like that, you can do that with uh, the tip of your scissors. 
And this is a file from a set of files that I have for ages, probably about 10 years ago. I got a file precision set by Basic Gray, and I keep grabbing it again and again. It is really handy, but I'm sure it is now discontinued. And since I'm making a project about Ginger, of course he has to check out what I'm doing and if I'm doing my job correctly. So now again I can put together the frame and stick the cut on top. And I think this is my favorite element of today's page. Now I also picked four of the phrases from the Snarky Cut stamp set and um, I am going to apply some uh, embossing ink there and stamp them on black cardstock. I did use my anti-static powder tool beforehand just to make sure that uh, my embossing powder is not going to stick all over the place and when you are stamping phrases make sure that you use fine embossing powder so that it picks up any detail of those stamps. And of course after heat setting all those uh, phrases I'm going to use my paper trimmer to cut them out in thin strips. Now I'm going to play a little bit with the placement, decide where everything is going to go and then just like always I'm going to stick them down. Now notice that uh, although I'm using three frames Two of them are exactly the same, the rectangle ones, and that's why I made sure that I'm using them in a different orientation, this way they are not going to look completely identical on my page and I will get some variation. Now I'm going to use this alphabet die set and I'm going to cut out the word uh, catitude. I love this uh, type of uh, alphabet because you get 140 dies inside, which means that you get multiples of each letter. For example, you get 7 A's inside. That means that with one passing you can have a whole phrase. In the word that I'm trying to spell today, the uh, letter T appears three times, but there are plenty of T's inside this alphabet, so I had to run it just once through my die cutting machine. So this is where I stick down the word catitude. I'm also going to stamp the date and today is the 27th and this is going to finish off the project for today. No white highlights or any splashes anywhere because I like it just the way it is. You will find the full list of supplies that I used for making this project. Here are some close-up photos where you can see more details. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Thank you all so much for joining me and I'll see you all next time.